Are you able to see my PowerPoint? Good morning. It's great to be here with you. My name is Elizabeth Slavitt, and I work at Khan Academy. At Khan Academy, I do a couple of things. One is I work with schools to figure out how Khan Academy's resources can be helpful to students and teachers in classrooms. And the other piece of my work is, is working on our content scaling and figuring out how we can expand our content. So I wanted to take some time today to just give a brief overview of Khan Academy's resources and share some stories about how Khan Academy has been used in classrooms. And definitely want to leave some time at the end for questions. So I'll try to keep it to about 20 minutes um, so we can have about 10 minutes or so for questions. So just to get started, if we kind of think about some of the challenges that are faced in education today, I think that there's many challenges, but two of them are that you know, education depends so much on who and where you are. So if you're a girl in Afghanistan, your educational opportunities will be severely limited uh, compared to somebody who's born in Palo Alto, where Stanford University is down the road from our office at Khan Academy. And really, it seems preposterous that in 2013, who and where you are is still such a huge driver of your educational uh, possibilities. The other real challenge that we have in education that I want to talk about today is that education tends to be one size fits all, even in the best of circumstances, even when students do have access to education. It's often the same as what their peers have access to, and they're often expected to go at the same pace as their peers. So I want to kind of talk about how Khan Academy, along with lots of other organizations, is trying to help address two, these two challenges. So Khan Academy got started several years ago when Sal Khan, our founder, was tutoring his cousins remotely um, over online. And he started offering free tutoring to his cousins. And, and other people kind of heard about it in his family and his family friends. And they wanted some free tutoring as well. And pretty soon he was getting overwhelmed and decided to start recording some of his lessons as YouTube videos and putting some of his rudimentary software online so that his cousins could practice math concepts at their own pace. He could check to see how they were doing, and he'd be able to use his time with them most efficiently. And over time, people besides his family started watching the videos on YouTube through the magic of the internet. And eventually this became much more popular, and he ended up quitting his job. And now we have nearly 40 people working uh, on Khan Academy together. And really, we're all working toward a rather audacious mission, which is to provide, provide a free world-class education for anyone, anywhere. And we still have a long way to go on our mission, but so far, we're pretty proud of what we've accomplished to date. We've delivered nearly 250 million lessons, more than a billion math problems have been done on our site, and we have more than 5 million unique users each month around the world. I want to share a little bit of an overview of, of the product on our site, what you would see when you came to Khan Academy. There's three major parts to our site today. There's watch, or our videos. There's practice, or our math problems. And there's our coaching resources for parents and teachers. I want to give us a quick overview of the, the watch part of our site. Our videos started out being made by Sal, our founder, and he still makes a lot of them. But we now have videos made by others as well, covering a pretty broad range of topics from math and science to engineering and medicine and even into art history. I want to give a quick overview of what some of the videos are like. We have more than 4,000 of them on the site today. We can integrate over the surface, and the notation usually is a capital sigma. All these interactions are just due to the gravity over interstellar, or almost you could call it intergalactic. This animal's fossils are only found in this area of South America. Oh, nice clean band here. Notice this is an aldehyde, and it's an alcohol. Of course, it's their 30 million plus the $20 million from the American manufacturer. They create the Committee of Public Safety, which sounds like a very nice committee. That is not a theater. No, Botticelli's portrait, the ancient goddess of love. This is 6 times 6 times 6, or 216. I'm told the humidity makes it feel hotter. Why is this? Excellent question, LeBron. Let's like make it cut it. Play with the pendulum and get a feel for how it moves. Function 
and it's a bridge rectifier. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If this does not blow your mind, then you have no emotion. I'd like to show that montage to give a sense of kind of the feel of the videos we have. They're fairly informal, casual videos that cover very specific topics. They're usually about five to ten or twelve minutes in length, depending on the field. And we now have lots of people making content beyond foul. If we truly want to provide a free world class education for anyone anywhere, then we need to have content available beyond English. So this is an example of a video that been remade in Spanish, we are actively translating our content into the world's ten most widely spoken languages. And this has largely been done by volunteers, which is really, really a wonderful thing to see people volunteering their time to translate educational content into their languages. In addition to the videos on our site, we also have practice problems in math. This is our knowledge map, which shows the different concepts we have, everything from basic arithmetic down into some algebra and geometry and even into some calculus. I want to show a couple examples of the exercises we have on our site. This is divisibility intuition. And what I like about this exercise is it's not just a textbook problem that's been put online, but instead really the student is able to interact with the question to really move around these dots and have an understanding of how the factors actually appear visually. So you can actually manipulate these dots and understand that, oh, there, there are two groups of 10 here, or there is one group of 20, or five groups of four. And it's quite intuitive and interactive. If you ever get stuck on a question, you can always break it down into hints, and students always get immediate feedback to know if they're right or wrong. Here's another example of a problem on our site. This is a basic algebra question where the student gets to interact with this scale to understand what it means to isolate a variable and to do the same thing to both sides of the equation. The idea here is to start to give students an intuition behind equations before they really get into solving them. And once again, this allows the student to interact with the, the concept and to work on something kind of at, at their own pace um, in their own level before having to get into just solving problems. And it takes advantage of the fact that this is online. This is something that would be harder to do on pencil and paper. We also have a computer science platform, and the idea here is really to make it as accessible and immediate for beginners as possible to really allow students to express their creativity. Here you can actually manipulate the variables on the left-hand side, and you can see that as you do that, the impact happens immediately on the right-hand side of the screen. And so students can write code and see it manifested immediately. They can manipulate these variables and understand how that impacts things. So they can understand what if gravity were different, or what if the planets were different sizes? How would that look? How can I simulate that to understand uh, the universe or understand the solar system better? There's lots of other examples of scientific concepts that are simulated on our site through our computer science platform as well. In addition to the resources we have on our site, we're also really excited about how classrooms are using them. And we're actually now at about 30,000 classrooms um, that are using Khan Academy in order to help personalize learning in their classrooms. And so I want to share a bit about that today. We have lots of resources designed for teachers and parents and coaches so that they can track how their students are doing. So here you can, if you're a teacher and you're teaching exponents and radicals, you can see all of the different skills that we have on our site on that topic. And then you can click on this graph and see where each of your students is, which students are struggling on a concept, which students have already mastered it, Maybe you have a student who's mastered it, tutor the students who are struggling. You can really get an immediate look into who's having trouble with things and who's already learned things on your site. So the idea here really is that you know, just as doctors have all this diagnostic information at their fingertips to make decisions about their patients, so too should teachers have all of this diagnostic information to understand why their students are struggling, where each of their students is at any moment in time. As a teacher, you really do have access to pretty unlimited information on the site. You can see for any given student, you can really drill down and see this first question the student got wrong, and that's why it's red. These other students, the student, these other questions the student got right. You can really drill down deeply and see exactly which answers the student put in, which answers were correct, which answers were incorrect. You can see every hint the student took. 
And then exec here is to really arm teachers with all the information they need about each of their individual students. We have a lot more information about how Khan Academy has been used in classrooms, as well as resources for teachers and parents and others in our teacher toolkit at khanacademy.org backslash toolkit. In addition, many of you on the on the webinar may be aware of the Common Core Standards, which are a set of common standards that have been adopted by many of the states in the U.S. We've mapped our content to those standards and are continuing to build out new content to make sure that we are covering those standards comprehensively. If you'd like to see our current mapping of our videos and exercises to the MAP Common Core Standards, you can go to khanacademy.org backslash common core. So Khan Academy started out as a set of resources for sales cousins and others who happened upon them. And we ended up working with schools in a formal way starting about two years ago when Sal, our founder, and Shantanu, our president, had a meeting with the superintendent and assistant superintendent of a local public school district, Los Altos. And during their discussion, they started talking about what it would look like to use Khan Academy in those, those classrooms in Los Altos. And Sal and Shantanu shared their vision, which would be that students would use Khan Academy to have a more self-paced environment. You know, every student learns and does things at their own pace. And it would be mastery-based. Just as a house will crumble if it doesn't have a strong foundation, so too do students' math knowledge crumble if they don't build a strong foundation early on. And so the idea is that Khan Academy could be used to allow students to learn at their own pace and to ensure that they really mastered concepts before moving on to more complex ideas. There was a lot of excitement in Los Altos about trying this out, and we did with just a few classrooms in 2010-2011, and things went really well. It was very exciting. Students were doing a lot more projects. They were learning at their own pace. Students who needed more time to remediate were taking advantage of it, and students who were able to go further ahead were able to do so as well. There was a lot of excitement there, and so Last year, we expanded to more classrooms, primarily in the Bay Area, in California, where we're located. As I mentioned before, though, in addition to the classrooms we work closely with, there's about almost 30,000 classrooms using Khan Academy as well. I want to share a couple examples about two of the schools that are using Khan Academy to really help personalize their instruction. Uh, we've been really excited to see the great work being done at many schools, in particular at Summit and Oakland Unity. Summit uh, is a school that was featured in the documentary Waiting for Superman. It's a charter network here in the Bay Area. And what they've done at Summit is they started out by having their students get extra time to practice math concepts on Khan Academy. And they really found that students were able to learn more deeply and to mastery in a really exciting way. And this led to lots of exciting changes in how they do math instruction this year. I'll let them tell it to you in their own words briefly first. When you assign homework, um, oftentimes you're solidifying bad practices. You're solidifying misconceptions. What Khan is really good at doing is giving instant feedback to all 36 kids in my classroom in a way that I could never do. So every student on every problem is getting instant feedback. Those misconceptions are not solidified. I think that's one thing Khan has changed dramatically is now they're learning processes and learn how to do them correctly as opposed to just learning how to get by. The students kind of see it as a video game where in a video game you fail all the time, right? In math you fail all the time. In every, everything in school you should fail all the time and you should learn from those mistakes. And what we've noticed has been great is that students learn from their mistakes before it's too late and they grow and they learn the math instead of um, continuing to pretend they understand it just like for any adult, goal setting is very important. And we found with students, making those goals very specific and very attainable are things that get them motivated. Everybody can go on Khan Academy now and say, I have a goal to finish these six exercises, and it keeps track of it on the top. It shows you what percentage of it you finished, and then it tells you when you're finished with your goal. And our students have really liked that validation, that they set a goal and they completed it, and they had a sense of accomplishment from it. It's changed my students um, because they're more accountable and they know where they're at. They definitely have a sense of whether they know something or they don't. 
they are much more vocal and they advocate for themselves. And it's changed me because I know a lot more about my students. Khan Academy doesn't allow the students to hide the deficits in their knowledge. It really challenges you to provide really excellent lessons for as many students as possible because you just have all of this information about your students. It's great for motivation. It's great for practice. I wouldn't go back and teach another way if I had the choice. So I really like that video because it helps illustrate the power of Khan Academy at this high school in San Jose. What's been really exciting for us to see is that last year when we made this video, Summit was using Khan Academy as a way for students to practice in more in-depth ways, for students to learn at their own pace. And they really were able to start to see from the data that was made available to them that there was such a wide range of levels within their class. And so this year, they're trying something pretty radical. They have a 200-student classroom. They've literally torn down the walls and are reimagining education. Instead of having one teacher and about 35 students, they have 200 students and about seven or so educators. Actually, it improves their ratio. Students across ninth and 10th grades are learning at their own pace. They each took a diagnostic exam at the beginning of the year and got an individualized learning plan. And students are learning everything from sixth grade math up through calculus, really at their own pace. And as students learn concepts, they go and they take assessments to prove their knowledge. There's kind of a genius bar set up where they can go and ask teachers for help on specific concepts. There's a lot of peer tutoring, opportunities for more projects. It's definitely a work in progress, but it's really exciting to see this school truly reimagining the way that they teach math and to move to a more competency-based model. One of the things that Summit has noticed and that a lot of charter schools have noticed, that a lot of public schools as well, is that they work really hard to help students get into college, but when they get there, they don't know how to help themselves. And so the idea here is to give students ownership for their own education, to give them a path and help them set goals and then allow them to access resources like Khan Academy to really learn concepts deeply and to have access to their teachers and their peers when they need help, but to really help students learn how to learn, which is such an important skill for them that will carry them throughout their lives. And we're excited to help be a part of that journey. In the interest of time and giving everyone a chance to ask questions, I'm going to skip over this video from Oakland Unity, but I'll just say that if you'd like to watch it, you can see it on our website, at, on our toolkit, as I showed before, khanacademy.org slash toolkit. Um, but Oakland Unity has really seen their students use Khan Academy to change their work habits. Students are doing much more work, more practice, taking more ownership for their education. And we've been really excited to see that. As I mentioned earlier, there's many challenges in education. Two of them are that education depends so much on who and where you are, where you're born, what type of resources are available to you. And it tends to be one size fits all, even in the best scenarios. And that's really no one's fault. When you have one teacher and 35 students, it's really impossible for the teacher to reach each student and meet each student's individual needs. What we're excited about with Khan Academy is that it can be a helpful tool to allow teachers to differentiate more and to allow students, whether they're in classrooms or whether they're learning on their own, to learn at their own pace, to learn to mastery, and to take ownership of their own education. So, we are really excited at Khan Academy to help make inroads on these two challenges by providing a free world-class education for anyone, anywhere, and replacing one-size-fits-all education with self-paced, mastery-based learning. We know we're only in the early stages, but we're excited about where we're at and looking forward to the future. And I would be very happy to answer any questions that anyone has at this time. Thanks so much for, for listening. And please feel free to check out our resources. Everything is free on our website. I think the best way for this maybe to work would be if anyone has a question, if you just want to go ahead and ask it, I can answer it. Um, otherwise, I think you can ask through the chat as well. If you want to ask a question, there's a top button in, on your screen in the upper left-hand corner that you can depress or just type it into the chat window.
Elizabeth, there was a question here about using um, Khan Academy for homeschools. Have you had uh, situations where people have used it in homeschool? Yes, we have. We know of many homeschools, homeschooling situations where Khan Academy is being used uh, anywhere from a uh, supplemental and occasional resource to a much more integral part of the learning experience. I, I think that one thing we've heard from homeschoolers is that they are able to use Khan Academy to move kind of outside of whatever the typical curriculum would have been and to allow students to really make sure that they are getting feedback and that they're able to understand something to mastery. You know, I'm, I talked mostly during my presentation about our math resources because that's the primary area where we focused our pilots on as we have practice problems and reporting on math. But I know that in homeschooling situations and also in more formal um, traditional education environments, we've seen our non-math resources be used as well where students are just interested in other topics and they'll go ahead and watch those videos or if they need extra clarification, they don't quite get something, they can go ahead and watch those videos to get another explanation. And just in case it's you know, not clear, the resources, I talked a lot about how they're being used in classrooms, um, but everything that I mentioned, everything from the videos and the exercises to the reports that are available for coaches or teachers or parents, all of that's available for free to anyone. You don't need a school login or anything in order to sign up. I would just be curious to know if anyone who's um, in the webinar can just share whether you're a teacher or a parent or you're working um, as an administrator or just in some other capacity in education. I would just love to know, you know who's on the call and whether you have used Khan Academy at all. I see that a few people are connected through uh, their phones or tablets, which may be hard for them to write into the chat room. <clears throat> but I wonder, Elizabeth, can you also talk a little bit about um, teachers and your work with teachers? How do you uh, reach out to teachers? How do you help teachers figure out how to integrate this into their classrooms, things like that? Sure. So we have the teacher toolkit that I was showing before, which is supposed to be a set of um, online resources that teachers can use in order to understand how Khan Academy can be used in classrooms and to get their questions answered. We have those resources available because there's only a few of us and there's lots of teachers, as I mentioned, who are using Khan Academy. So it's supposed to be a self-help set of resources. In addition, we do work closely with a handful of teachers that we've become connected to through a pilot program that we did where we have put on an application and ended up working with several schools that way. Um, in addition, we do provide some professional development in person where we've done about a dozen or so in-person workshops for a few hundred teachers in different cities across the U.S. where a bunch of teachers from that city will come in for a day or for two days and we'll provide training for them on how Khan Academy's resources work and examples of how teachers have used Khan Academy in their classrooms so that they can go ahead and get up to speed and start using it in their classrooms um, right away. We really encourage anyone who's interested in, in learning more about how to use Khan Academy to check out our toolkit where you can get um, a lot of initial information. Can you post that link in the uh, chat window? Sure. I can definitely do that. Okay, well, thank you so much for having me. Really appreciate getting to participate. And if you have any additional questions or are curious about how our site can be used, you can find out a lot more in our toolkit and just on our site in general. So thanks so much for joining me. 
Thank you. Thanks for the presentation and thanks for your time. We're going to archive this webinar and make it available on the Open Education Week site. So if you missed part of it or if you have friends that wanted to join, please tell them to look at the schedule and we'll get the link up as soon as we can.